Hello, I have some more questions. And I know a lot of women will not like this topic, but it needs to be said and discussed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop off with the question. What do we as women bring to the table? And how does marriage benefit men in America today? Yes, I did say, what do we as women bring to the table? And no, we are not the table. I don't know how or when our egos have gotten so large that we think that we are the table or that we're the prize. Because we reside on a place called earth, we must realize that relationships are give and take. And before we can enter into a relationship with another person, we must know what we can offer before they even consider giving us their time. We can say all day long that we want unconditional love. But let's be real, relationships are conditional. Setting standards and boundaries is conditional. And we as women, we have standards and boundaries for men. However, when it comes to men setting standards and boundaries for us, we have a problem. And a lot of women believe that the fruit between their legs is the table and that it's enough. Well, I have news. It is not. So here are my questions. Question one, what makes us think that we are the table? I keep hearing this comment and we act like we're the prize. Now I'm sure to some Pookie and Ray Ray, and Ray, Ray some women are the prize. But if you're attracting Pookie and Ray Rays, then obviously you're not. See, what we don't realize is that the type of men that we really want, we need to ask ourselves, are we the type of woman that they would want? But we as women, we never ask ourselves these questions because we don't look at ourselves in this matter. Again, because we think we're the prize. Question two. Why does it irk women so much when, when a man asks you or when a man asks us what we can offer or what do we bring to the table? This is actually a valid question if a man is going to spend his time, money, and resources on you. Again, I'm not referring to Pookie and Ray Ray's. I am speaking specifically about men. That word alone should tell you a lot, but I digress. If a man is going to invest in a woman, he wants to know what he's getting besides some fruit that he can get from any type of grocery store. Are we trying to learn and understand what men value in a woman? No, we're not because we're too busy focusing on, an, on men and what they don't bring to the table. It amazes me how we can have 50 million standards for a man to have and achieve, but our response continues to be we are the table. If you're seeking a relationship, if you're single and you're seeking a relationship at this time, being the table would not be an issue because most men who are seeking relationships and marriage would not waste their time on letting good furniture rot. Question three, why do some of us think that having a child is more important than being married? We think that this is an old paradigm. However, the family dynamic was created for a reason. The world was created with humans being male, female, and child. This dynamic was created to create balanced human beings. And what I mean by that is energetically, men and women bring different energies to the table when it comes to raising a child. And both energies are needed to create balanced human beings. We are quick to sleep with a man and have a child before we even get married. And I know that these energies, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give a, a, a real quick personal thing. I did not have my father in my life. So I really missed out on that, that male energy, that masculine energy. My mother was a great mother and I have all the feminine qualities of, of a mother nurturing, caring and all of that, but I needed that masculine energy and I needed masculine discipline and teachings that could have benefited me and prevented me from making some of the mistakes that I've made in my lifetime. So having these energies are very important. And if we don't have, if we're not married, then it goes to my next question. Why do we hold our children from their fathers? Because we're bitter or we're angry. Men realize that when women have children, they usually have the rights. 
And men are realizing that women have all the rights in this country. And if they get married and a woman decides that she wants to get divorced, the courts will usually rule in her favor. A study led by the American Sociological Association determined that nearly 70% of divorces are initiated by women. And since our Western society system makes women precedence over men, women have all the rights to the child for the most part. Men who want to be with their children or be in their children's lives are tired of, of having to fight to be able to see their children. So if a man gets married, he has to worry about if the woman is going to file for divorce, is she going to flip on him or and if she's going to keep the child away from him. And on top of that, he has to pay, pay child support. When does a woman have to pay child support? Question five, do women spend time assessing themselves or do we spend time assessing men more? What I mean by this question is men must assess themselves. It is baked into their DNA. It is baked into society. It is baked into their su survival skills. Again, I'm not referring to Pookie and Ray Ray's. Men must assess themselves in order to make it into this world. He has to number one, see where he falls in line in the men hierarchy. And once he figured this out, he knows how to move in the world based on that hierarchy. Number two, men must also learn all about what women want in order to, ob to obtain and create a legacy. He must study what women want and what they want to hear. And he must also know what his financial bracket can get him. Having this knowledge allows him to move accordingly. And at any given time, he's being given a performance review by society and by us as women. Women, on the other hand, we're assessing the men instead of assessing ourselves. We're putting our focus on men instead of focusing on being the woman that a man would want to make a life partner, that a man would want to spend money on, that a man would want to provide resources to, that a man would want to take care of you for the rest of your life. We're not focusing, we're not assessing ourselves to, to put ourselves in that position. So how does marriage benefit men again when the financial burden, the stress of being the protector, the worry of a woman divorcing him, again, 70% of women initiate divorces and then not being able to see his child is highly likely in today's modern society. And as a woman, if your response is men want to control women, men want to be abusive to women, it goes both ways. Men are doing this. Men need to be better fathers. Men need to, look, to do this. Men, 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 men. Then I'm going to say to you, look in the mirror. And that's probably going to go over most women's heads. Because when you look in the mirror, the men that you're attracting is a reflection of you.